Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. In this video I'm gonna be showing you how to read data from cross account S3 bucket to build transaction data lake. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Again in companies this is fairly common right you would have your S3 buckets uh, again if a company is using control tower meaning each team or each application can have several AWS account. For example let's consider a very simple one okay. Let's say the order team has their own AWS account where they have their microservices deployed and everything. And they are dumping data in our S3 bucket. The payments team is also doing the same. They have their own um, AWS account and they're you know dumping data in their S3 bucket. Now you wanna build a transactional data like, right? So <laughs> here comes the challenge, right? Well, you are a data team, right? You are given your own AWS account. Now you wanna read data from cross account buckets and you, you wanna build your transactional data like in your data team account and then, you know, so consumption would be in the da data team account. So A, how do I even read data from cross account S3 bucket? This is the video for you. So let me get started straight into action. All right. so. For the demo, I made a sandbox account here, which is called sandbox data team. Again, consider this as a you know separate account, right? So I'm gonna go to the S3 and I have made an S3 bucket over here and I'll show you what you need to do. So here you can see de uh, dev sandbox uh, account bucket. So over here, you wanna go to the permissions and you wanna click on, over here you wanna click on, uh, where did I go? There was a button for edit, yeah, there you go, edit. And then you wanna put this policy over here. So what is this policy about? So let me show you that. So you wanna say, uh, you know, you wanna basically add this policy and say, uh, put your account number over here. This is the account number who's trying to access uh, this S3 bucket. So if you take a look at the image over here, in this case, uh, my data team wants to access the order, uh, you know, order, uh, order team S3 buckets, right? So you wanna put the data team um, AWS account over here, okay? So that you, so so the order team is gonna add this. So this is this means the order team is saying that, okay, data team account can now read the S3 buckets, um, basically is what it's trying to say. And here is the bucket name. So again, in this case, the bucket name would be, uh, let me show you. So in this case, the bucket name would be dev sandbox account bucket, right? So that's, that's what we're gonna put it here. So if you observe, um, I did put the policy over here. Uh, really quickly, I wanna show you permissions. So observe, right? Uh, I, I gave the bucket name, right? This is the bucket, right? And basically this is the account number who's trying to access this bu bucket, okay? So I did that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to my sandbox training account, right? So this is where, um, I'm gonna build my transactional data lake. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna read data from a cross account S3 bucket, catalog it, and then create a transactional data lake in my data team account. And you know, the users can run ad hoc query using Athena, they can consume the data using Redshift Spectrum, they could build incremental data processing pipeline from there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, give me a second, this might take a little uh, while because I have to start my notebook. Uh, so if I go to my ETL jobs, so again, if that policy, if you don't put that policy, it is not gonna work and it's probably gonna give you an error. I just wanted to let you know about that, okay? So what you can do is now, and basically uh, each team can dump their raw data in their respective S3 buckets and all your consumption and ETL workloads would be there in the data team account. So now you, you can easily read data from cross account S3 buckets, catalog it in the data team account, build your transactional data like consume using Athena, build incremental pipelines, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you want, you could separate, you know, the querying part or, you know, the reporting part as well in a separate AWS account. But again, I'm, I'm just trying to show you the big picture over here. So I have my glue notebook and this might take about a second or two. Give me a second. So I'm going to run the cell. And now what I'm just going to show you is I'm going to show you uh, uh, basically the reading the data from the cross account bucket. So I'm going to create a spark session over here. And this usually takes about a time. So here you can see it's waiting for the session. I'll zoom in over here. And then basically I would be able to create my transactional data like again, I am reading from a cross account bucket. Observe this, this is on a different uh, AWS account. So just waiting for this to complete can take about a second or two. Again, you 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 will uh, deal with all these stuff as a data engineer, right? I mean, you know the cross account buckets, you know cross account accessing cross account glue databases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
very 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 common stuff okay so the spark session has been created so i should be able to read this now i shouldn't be getting any errors here okay that that is the goal here so if i read uh, the data from that folder here you can see sandbox account bucket right the one that i just made temporarily to show you hopefully i should be seeing certain results now okay so the cell execution is complete and now i'm executing spark df dot show so i'm basically trying to show you the data frame here right again that policy is important okay so here you can see i'm able to see the data frame i'm gonna create my uh, table so now again i'm gonna basically consume now my transactional data like would be there in my uh, data team account so what i will do is i wanna quickly open up uh, s3 over here I think I have a bucket in the uh, this account and that is EMR serverless. I'm, I'm just gonna use that for the demo. Let me quickly get the name. All right, so I'm gonna now build my transaction data lake in my this account, okay? So basically we are reading from an, another account and then we are building the transaction data lake over here, okay? So we kind of paste the bucket name over here, okay? So that's good. Hoodie DB, hoodie table, and this is, the, you know, the path. And then we're gonna use copy on write. I'm gonna use some hoodie marketplace connector and I'll try to execute the cell. Hopefully I don't get any errors. So what we did is A, we are reading uh, data from different S3 buckets. We are uh, basically performing our ETL in our data team account and creating a transaction data lake. Now the consumption could be also in the same account or you could make it in a different account. Again, depending upon your use cases, right? Okay, so the execution is complete. So which means if I now go to the glue database, I should be seeing a database called HoodieDB and I should be able to run ad hoc queries at this point. So really, really quickly, if I go to database and there you go, and there's my Hoodie table, and so basically now I can run a ad hoc query. So we have successfully implemented this model, right? We have a bucket in a different account. We are reading it. We are cataloging in the data team account and we are consuming in the data team account as well. So now there you go. Should, should work. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. So what we did here is a, um, you know, all ETL related workloads, all uh, querying related workloads, uh, we are essentially doing in the data team. And the application team can dump their respective data into their re respective S3 buckets. And then you can consume the data in the central AWS account. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And um, uh, the only thing that you need is that policy. I'll leave that in the description. With that being said, keep smiling. And if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section. Until then, see you next time.